Greetings everyone, my name is Frankie V and I am the lead animator at Frozen Sand working on Urban Terror HD. But uh, another part of my duties with the team, within the team, is as the uh, content asset uh, uh, manager slash supervisor. And my uh, role is to ensure that anything that is added into the engine doesn't uh, affect it in a, a negative uh, way in regards to, say, frame rates or overall performance. And as part of those duties too as well is, is to actually get into the game in various uh, different areas, uh, texturing, uh, map making, uh, model design, animations and so forth, actually test, underload uh, the performance of the engine so I can go back to the team with, uh, with insurance and known numbers that, uh, that uh, for example, uh, going from a 5k player model to a 10k player model is not going to have any effect as to in regards to performance. And uh, the, the uh, subject of discussion today, of course, is going to be uh, uh, some of the tests based on the testing that we've done with the inclusion of the normal maps as well as specular maps to try to, uh, you know, bring out the performance level that uh, has well, up till now seems to be rather lacking in, in some, of the, some of the demonstrations that we've been seeing. So we've kind of taken it on ourselves to actually get in here and... Uh, try uh, different approaches to uh, to uh, applying these uh, different maps as a shader type effect uh, rather than uh, sticking with the standard uh, the, the, the normal operations of how a map is usually made uh, particularly in the area of lighting now this is going to mean if you want an HD quality type map uh, then there's a few things that you're going to have to uh, adjust to uh, particularly in the area of, of, of forced lighting and to get the maximum type of performance you can out of the normal map system as well as the specular maps. Atypically, there's been an ongoing battle between uh, map makers and texture artists trying to get uh, a balance between making a, a map visible based on the thinking that if we increase light level, we increase, increase visibility. Where what the the, uh, the side effect to that, of course, is it oversaturates <coughs> over oversaturates the texture levels to the point that we have to increase the output levels of, of the player models, creating um, day glow blue uh, 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 uniforms and uh, neon uh, <laughs> orange jumpsuits. So it's it's one kind of self defeating to the other. Now, with uh, spec and normal maps uh, being included, uh, we can create a uh, we've created a uh, a third feature as part of the MD5 uh, character model set, in that the player models themselves contain their own lighting source. In other words, they are self-illuminated regardless of the, the area in which they or the map that they're in, and they will adjust uh, well semi-dynamically to the lighting levels within that environment. So we've uh, kind of put it, the, uh, the nuance onto the map maker to correct uh, their lighting levels as well as uh, change their lighting techniques to create what we would call a, a HD, an HD based uh, map as opposed to a 4.x built map and using lighting techniques that are beneficial to both uh, the visualize the visualize the visual aspect of the environment as well as beneficial to any kind of player model or opponent that is running through this area and creating a high impact visibility between which is of course ultimately is what uh, the players the players themselves want now to sort of uh, start from square one scratch I am not a map maker so don't be asking me any map making questions uh, my purpose uh, my uh, reason for being here is to beat up on this stuff to try to figure out what is the best approach to be able to create the type of lighting environment that we actually want ultimately uh, uh, Urban Terror HD to be. And that is more natural, more realistic type of lighting levels in combination to high contrast player models. And it's a uh, you know, more or less a win-win type of situation and we're using that te the, the uh, technology itself uh, not just to present eye candy, but to over to increase that overall performance envelope. It has become known as the uh, the cornerstone and the hallmark of our of our game over the past 10 years. Now, to get started, uh, some of the basic uh, ideas and concepts of how well let's start with the texture at the texture level to begin with, because that's where everything sort of begins with begins in the first place. You obviously need to need some form of texture to be applied to a surface area, and uh, how that texture is done plays a large part in how it overall reacts to any type of lighting that we apply to it. 
particularly when we apply a specular or a bump map. So if we look at the wood over here at the side, for example, we see that we have some, uh, some level of specularity to it. It's very light, very ambiguous to the, uh, uh, to, to, to the texture level itself, but we can also see that we have an extrusion or a bumping effect that's taken place that looks rather natural rather than over-exaggerated through specularity. And it's uh, usually caused by, by maps that uh, already have a uh, level specular into it, into it to begin with. Like you go to um, a texture site like CG Textures or something like that and you download a photograph. The photograph itself already contains specular and bump information within the, te within the uh, texture element. So you got to kind of uh, weed that out, uh, out to create uh, uh, an almost flat, monotone uh, co color type of texturing, which when we apply our specular as well as our, our, our bump map and, and, and some form of lighting uh, system onto it, it behaves based on those elements and not the, on the elements that are already built into it. So flat textures is a good start. You know, it's kind of like it has to look bad before it looks good kind of situation, <coughs> which is a good way of looking at it. Uh, something else that uh, needs to be taken, uh, taken a close, much closer look at or actually eliminated altogether is, um, is any type of ambient lighting in general. Uh, ambient lighting is, is f naturally free of any type of uh, spec specularity to begin with, but it also has a tendency to leach the, uh, the specular effect off, off the shader effects that are applied to the texture. So it, it's a negative effect. It's a negative gain type of lighting uh, approach. So and ambient, don't use it unless you really have a need to use it in the first place. And understand that it's going to have uh, a negative impact on any type of mapping system that you're going to be applying to, to your surface areas. <coughs> Yeah, uh, regards to normal bump maps, normal bump maps are, are dependent upon, upon specular good specularity. Uh, too much specularity is going to create an overabundance of, of, of extrusion of the texture through the, through the bump mapping or normal mapping system. So you not just not only do you need to uh, watch the levels of your input level output levels <coughs> of your of the maps that you're applying to, you also have to kind of balance between your textures. Your, map, your normal map and your specular map to create the ideal type of uh, mapping levels within the texturing system itself. Which means um, any type of uh, lighting effect that, uh, that is usually used off the surface itself in the form of map lighting or using the, uh, a wall to project light into the area uh, should be avoided too as well because uh, when you apply a uh, a specular map to a lidded surface, it basically nullifies the effect of the specular. So once again, you're back to overcompensating in a specular level to uh, to levels that are above and beyond what should be normally acceptable to counteract the lighting effect of a surface that shouldn't be projecting light in the first place. So uh, that's the job of the spe specular map. The specular map can be used to fool or trick the surface into thinking that it's reflecting light off of it into into the volume of space. So what we're looking at here so far is eliminating any type of uh, ambient type fill lighting. We're looking at uh, using less shaders uh, directly re uh, uh, relating to the texture itself unless it has a particular uh, specific need because the specular and the bump maps and uh, normal maps will handle that as part of its, uh, as its natural tendency to uh, reflect light back into the environment. There's no need to have the surface reflect light, but to introduce lighting effects into the surface through lighting uh, uh, entities, which we'll be discussing in, in just a moment here. But just be aware of that. We're, go we're basically starting with nothing. Uh, we're texturing a wall. Uh, the ultimate, uh, ultimately, when we uh, load it up into the, into the game, we should see a big black empty. Uh, this is our canvas and from which we're going to work with based on the idea of, uh, of painting with lights, which is a technique that we have derived based on the understanding that there is no volumetric uh, type of lighting effect within the Intex 3 engine. The uh, elements that you put in as, as lighting elements don't, mm, don't really... Uh, 
project light onto a surface in the same typical manner as, say, a 3D application like uh, 3ds Max or Maya does, but in actuality, he behaves more like a 2D paint application like Photoshop, for example. So, with by looking at it in that way, we're looking at uh, using tools like Dodge and Burn to create lighting effects into the texture, and then using the specular and the bump maps to actually re to actually reflect that back uh, that information that we're painting into the texture back into the environment without having to include uh, assist from um, from lighting or, or or shaders effect. Now, for the record, it's, uh, in this map so far uh, is is basically clean from any type of uh, any type of shading assistance except for one that I left in here to show as a demonstration and we'll get to that in a, in a while and the only type of uh, shader that has been applied is anything that needs an opacity map or needs to be, have an illuminated nature to it like for example the stained glass we're looking at the stained glass here there's a, there's a, a, a light map that has been assigned to it but the, the, the uh, surface itself does not project light into the area uh, once again, we want to first establish a, a clean, a clean uh, a, a canvas to work on, in which we can start plastering our lighting effect onto it. <clears throat> so, uh, less uh, less map lighting, less uh, light projection from surfaces, uh, zero ambient light fill. Let specular bump maps do their thing. And, uh, and focus more on adding uh, lighting elements into the environment much in the same way as you would want to be painting a two-dimensional environment uh, into a, a three-dimensional type of uh, uh, illusion. So if, say for example we're looking down straight down the hallway here we're looking at this in a two-dimensional plane you know we have height width of our monitor but we have the illusion of depth that's been projected through the uh, uh, through the trickery of lighting as it's funneled through and down through the hallway here. We've also added a little bit of fog. Fog is uh, environment fog. Environmental fog is really pretty good at at uh, at, at softening up distance uh, lighting effects at, at at a distance. Although this is hmm, probably a little too much fog, uh, we want to kind of use it to decrease and create an FOV type of effect. Um, at a distance without uh, without a, creating a, a noticeable uh, fog type of you know uh, uh, black uh, a wall of fog in the background there so we bring this down keep bringing it down keep it bringing it down until we get really nice blending of the lighting in the background and that really helps to create a depth a sense of depth within the environment now to get on to the technique that we are actually using to create uh, in-house our HD style mapping we're using a technique as I said uh, we refer to it as painting with lights and, and it's based on the simple concept of putting as many light entities into the environment that you need to create the type of effect wall or painted effect onto the walls within a three-dimensional environment <coughs> so a light entity we think of it more as being a brush within an application like GTK Radiant that we're using to create the type of uh, illusion of, of, of light on a two-dimensional plane uh, to create the, the, the depth that we could paint in with something like Photoshop. Of course, we're um, starting to recycle stuff here again, so let's kind of move things along a bit more forward here and then discuss how these lights can impact uh, the, the environment as, as a paintbrush. Uh, the first of all, the uh, one entity we can look at, at, a lighting entity we can look at as being a, a nominal directional type of light, which is more of a fill. It will, it will, it tends to fill an area with light rather than focusing the light as 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 we would want, say, with a light with with a uh, light uh, or with a pen to a tablet to create a, a textured effect. Uh, the um, the, the spotlight, on the other hand, is, is more of a directional type of uh, 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 paintbrush in that uh, it doesn't have any spatial relationship as to the location of the light within the environment as, as the, uh, the actual effect is generated from the target outwards based on its radius as well as its lighting level. Another thing, thing that we need to discuss here too as well is the avoidance of monochromatic lighting setups. In other words, you're making a, a, light so a single point light source 
at uh, at a value of 1500 to 2000 and then you copying and dragging off 10 copies of that based on the same uh, value as the original all you're doing is you're creating a single sheet of light, uh, lighting effect through the entire level based on a monochromatic uh, uh, values and in this case 111 in the RGB channels is not a good idea to start with because it does not give this anything in the specular maps or any of the other maps within the environment any any room to go plus or minus based on a 111 value you can't do from what I understand you can't do negative values in code anyway so uh, it's something to be uh, aware of is, is that we want to offset because nothing is 100 percent pure 111 or pure white in the real world you want to kind of tint your light with uh, uh, with either a slight yellow, a slight uh, orange, a slight red is pretty good. Uh, even even an offset of white is is much better than going with a solid uh, white color. <coughs> uh, that this will prevent your retinas from burning out, of course, when you start looking at uh, surface areas. And of course, the specular maps themselves react much better to these kind of tintings. And uh, and the side benefit to that, of course, is it creates a much more a much more renderosity type of effect overall uh, as as the, as it dabbles or hits the surface now back getting back to the idea of painting with lights here uh, we're looking at this corridor here uh, it's it's pretty nicely lighted I, I certainly like it it needs a little bit more work we need to push some more shadows into it to, to make it uh, a little not necessarily photorealistic but a little bit more give it a little bit more stylization and flair and of course the artist's prerogative is is to never to never to give up on the piece but to abandon it when they lose interest so uh, what we've done here is basically in this hallway is about two dozen different types of variations of, of the two lights that are, are available in, in GTK Radiant and used as, as paint brushes as opposed to as, uh, as opposed to a dynamic fill within this within this corridor. So I needed a little certain highlight onto a picture frame. I put a, a light in there with a, a light entity in there with a small enough value that it only affects that one small portion. Then I repeated did that in various different areas, slight offset in the uh, o o o of the uh, overall uh, color level of the lighting, as well as cha slight changes and variations in the lighting levels. Uh, maximum lighting level down of any light in this hallway here is probably about. 300 and goes as low as about uh, 25 or 30 and it's just to kind of bleed off and push uh, shadows into the kind of direction that we wanted in to elongate uh, the, the light as it hits hits the wall uh, later on at some point of course I'm going to be putting in point source uh, elements here to suggest uh, lights that are directed into that are directing against the surfaces here but we want to but that's just a that's just a you know, a bonus we don't really need uh, that for th those kind of things for a video game but it does add a little bit of a bit of more real realistic uh, imagery uh, uh, as a 3d environment on a 2d plane uh, <coughs> so I think that more or less covers the, the fundamental basic ideas of how we're using lights to kind of paint in uh, a dab or a dibble at a time. Uh, currently within this map, I, uh, I think I may have mentioned, is uh, there is over a hundred little lot variations of lights in various different areas that are designed to perform a specific task and not necessarily to create an envelope of lighting within the total environment as a whole. So that's the kind of approach that we're taking. We move into one area, we paint the walls, move into another area, paint the walls, move into the other area, paint the walls, and we continue that throughout the entire map until everything, all the levels and all the, all the uh, textures and the outputs and inputs have a, a consistency that creates the illusion of, 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 of a three-dimensional environment based on using 2D, 2D painting type of techniques. Now, as we move out 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 in, into 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 the world, we can see how much of a dramatic effect that the, this type of uh, this type of approach can have within a three-dimensional environment. Once again, be aware this is this is just right now. This is just uh, uh, this is just uh, more or less research. Uh, I've rebuilt this re this uh, this lighting rig probably about a half a dozen different times, trying various different variations and, and, and colorations and, and so forth to, to actually see how things actually react against uh, shader uh, shaders that have been applied. 
and, and simply come to the conclusion that uh, the use of shaders or, or self self illuminating textures is not beneficial anymore to the use when we when uh, we have access to uh, um, specularity as well as uh, normal maps and uh, as we move out here we're going to see a much more dramatic effect within a, within an overall environment we have a better sense of distance based on some really basic uh, lighting systems. Once again, there is absolutely zero light map lighting that's taking place here, so we're going to have to be, have to go through each area, one almost every surface in this in this map to create the type of effect uh, directly or indirectly off of it using just the, just the two uh, lighting systems that we have, we have available and to the paint that effect into it. Now, if we look, for example, on this surface here, there's very little normal map input and very little specular map input. We still need to move, work the specular a bit more to get rid of, to sort of weed out a, a, a bit more of that plastic kind of looking effect to it. But if we don't illuminate the surface or add a shader effect, the, it's obvious that the, the, that the lighting element that we're putting in here is having a much more dramatic effect at lower input levels without having to resort to uh, creating shiny uh, shrink wrap uh, type of uh, surfaces. Now, if we look here, the other side benefit too, of course, is, a co is uh, shadows have a better opportunity to actually be generated, which is, uh, the engine already has the ability to do to some degree, but are lost to oversaturation and, and extreme white levels that have been put into the lighting rig uh, of any particular given map. So we see here, we actually have four uh, distinct type of, uh, of shadows interacting as, as one. And these are based on where the point source lighting is actually occurring. So we have one type of shadowing effect here that moves into a third, second, which moves into a third, which we have a force over here. And these are all generated by, single, by either uh, a single point light source or mostly from uh, targeted uh, lighting systems. And we're using them to direct lighting information into a direction rather than to use it as the, the lights uh, entities as a, a as a light emitting source against a surface area. <coughs> so, for example, it, right here is a single point light source that is used to highlight this opening here over right next to it. And that splashes out across the side behind it. And here... I have a targeted light that's pointed into the distance towards the opposite wall, which creates that uh, really nice elongated type of shadowing type of effect across the, uh, the deck surface here. And it, it also helps to, in, to produce the type of uh, specular that we want from the, from the deck area here, based on the fact that our environment, it's, it's raining. So, of course, we want wet a wet tile look. So it's an appropriate use of a specular to actually increase its output level to create that type of illusion. Where in this en environment in here, we're inside, we want a tiling effect that doesn't have, that has a three-dimensional effect, still has some specular level, but yet is, it doesn't have that shrink type, type of look. So it's always, it's, when it comes to bump and specular math, it's best to think in terms of less is better, and you can always make it more later if you need to. <coughs> based on the need uh, of the particular environment. We're nice, warm, warm and uh, dry. We're moving out into a wet environment. We can use that, uh, some trickery without, uh, without uh, map lightings or, or, or ambient lighting fills getting in the way and letting the, uh, letting the, t the uh, texture map shaders do their thing. And you know, even the tiling along the side here, you can see that very little, very little specular has been applied to it, yet we still have a, you know, a, a, a a much more realistic type of effect within this environment. Now, another thing that we have discovered through uh, through trial and error is we can use actually the lighting effect, the lighting, uh, uh, single point lighting, to actually create a direction, uh, a force direction within the map environment itself, without actually worrying about where the player currently is, but what where they are heading to. So, you can see this top deck, you know. The, the illumination from the windows is spilling out into onto the deck, yet the, the uh, lighting levels on the, the front part of the surface of this deck itself doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, clash with the lights of the, of, the, uh, of the room in behind it. So we get a kind of a sense that there's, there's you know, we want to kind of jump in here, look through the window kind of thing, you know. 
<laughs> maybe I'll, maybe maybe I'll make them all breakable so people can cut, cut, sort of climb through them if they want to. Uh, but if you look in the distance, we've uh, by using various different lighting levels and various different colorations within the lighting, you can create a sense of direction uh, by just by just lighting alone. So you know the level of that that area in here is kind of says okay there's a place in here that we want to go into but if we come back out we can see that okay we got uh, an indication of uh, of a direction uh, over here that we want to go into here and of course lighting is being bounced around in here creating a rim lighting for that light in the, uh, for that entry in the back that suggests another direction once again you can also use uh, slight coloration variations to suggest uh, direction if you want you know, uh, say, uh, say uh, a much more, use much, uh, much more, say, grayer type of shade of white on the wall, but emit uh, a much more whiter type of light through a doorway. Will uh, automatically people will start to uh, associate that with with direction, like, uh, like in the same idea that uh, red is stop and, and green is go. Um, you can sort of. Uh, Bring pe let people sort of walk around uh, in, in the map and have a much better sense of of, of direction uh, that uh, as directional kind of cues. Now, <coughs> uh, here is uh, another uh, area in here where a lot of uh, various little single point lightings have been put into painting in the lighting effect directly into the texture itself, um, as opposed to creating a volumetric type of lighting overall. Once again, this is. This is based on uh, well, the concept is based more on the principles of a three po the, the ever traditional three point lighting system. So, if you want to try to get a better idea of of, of, of lighting theory in general, um, <laughs> a place dealing with uh, with uh, video game map uh, video game uh, map creation is probably not the best place to get the, the 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 actual bottom line theory, as you could probably go out there and go to say a photography site where where you know lighting is everything they uh, deal with three-point systems all the time uh, talk to a photographer uh, RC is uh, also a photographer so he actually uh, actually throws in a little bit, a bit of uh, let's say sideways type of information that's actually useful in a three-dimensional environment <coughs> you know how do you how do you make things, something stand out particularly in, in a map in an engine that doesn't have a volumetric type of system so in this case here uh, we're, I'm using what uh, I like to refer to as the pearl, the pearl necklace effect. In other words, uh, each each of these alcoves has a single point light source level that has a level that is slightly decayed from the one before it. So if you look down, look down into the background, as well as with the fogging, uh, and so forth, we get a a separation of 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 lights from one one area into the other which in turn creates the illusion of depth if we use the single point light once again if we're using monochromatic lighting we lose that three-dimensional effect and this just becomes a flat two-dimensional plane and we have absolutely no depth to this to what we're looking at here so as we're moving through here zoom 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 it actually has uh, uh, it has volume it has a sense of, uh, th of three dimension and on a two dimensional plane it's also a, a pearl na uh, a set of pearls running down in front of it <coughs> because there's no renderosity type of effect within the uh, within the engine you can actually fool or trick or cheat a renderosity type of effect by placing low level uh, light entities in front of behind or around and again an area which which you, which you wants to push any type of light or shading effect or shadow effect into different various areas. So, in front of each of these doorways is a is a single point light. Once again, we're not using uh, one one one. We have a variation of our color tones to uh, to complement uh, to complement the uh, the, uh, the surface on which it's striking. We could go with a little bit more reddish tint because of the red brick and bleed that into the actual archway you know for first we can, we can force a little bit of red from the side here into the uh, into a brown archway it, it's more of a renderosity effect and that continues of course all the way down you know we have a light 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 uh, value about 100 125 maybe 150 <coughs> for those then of course we're, we've we've uh, extended the uh, the idea of directional cues using lighting uh, 
for example, in the back, you can see that the, the light levels in the archways is obviously higher than, than the area in which it's surrounded. So it says, go this way. As well as we look on up the top of the stairs, we have another, another sense of uh, an idea through using lighting that says, go this way. So you can use lighting, rather, uh, the uh, lighting entities rather effectively to create a dynamic lighting uh, kind of effect without really the necessity of having dynamic lighting to begin with. <clears throat> now, I think at this point we should talk a little bit about the effect of uh, how these lighting te this lighting technique actually affects player model visibility. And uh, as you can see, <laughs> pretty darn well. Let me uh, go third, third person to the front here. I'll start moving out. You can see that the laying, because of the tonal quality difference in the lighting, it actually affects the uh, texturing of the, of the player models uh, in a slightly different color tones than, than, it's, it, than the shader effect that is applied. And as you can see, uh, as we move down, um, I have once again set up a, a, a series, a pearl, down the top deck here of about three lights in front of each of the windows to create the illusion of light being projected out of it. But its uh, lighting level is so low and it's so tight that it really doesn't affect the overall area in the way of introducing lighting it into it. But as a player model walks through it, the texture shader reacts to the changes in the light density. Remember, it's not volumetric, it's density that, uh, that, that, that's, that's being involved here. And once again, uh, this is all theory, so uh, <laughs> I could very well be wrong. Uh, and then we're just more or less presenting a lot of these ideas to give uh, map makers a better idea of a starting point and, and as a form and means of reference of how, uh, how uh, you know, some of the changes that need to be made uh, in, in map design, particularly in regards to uh, lighting and particularly in what, to what we would consider an HD quality map. So lighting levels for the player model is not a problem. We'll take care of that. Don't worry about it. Create whatever lights you have levels that you want within your map or, or and not have to worry about making sure the player players have a high level of visibility. Another technique that, is, that we use is uh, actually really, rather really old school. I mean, old, old school. We go back to uh, 3DS Max 2.5 as far as I can remember before when... Uh, 3D applications didn't have any kind of uh, advanced lighting system or uh, any kind of, um, let's say, renderosity type of effect. You had to kind of cheat a lot of your, your dynamic, uh, f to get that dynamic type of lighting effect out of, out of, uh, out of your renders. And a technique that, is, that, that we use is decaying light, is using a decaying light set or a light dome, which is a pretty, pretty slick idea in itself in that you create a dome or a, a sphere, you cut sphere in half, use it as a dome, then you take uh, various different lights and create instance copies at each vertice point within it, and that becomes your light, that becomes your light source as in a dome light. And it, it, it worked fairly decently, but it wasn't a true renderosity effect. But from that, we were able to uh, uh, borrow a lot of uh, interesting uh, lighting techniques that you can force into your render. Don't, uh, in other words, you don't really, you shouldn't really, uh, uh, shouldn't really rely on uh, really rely on uh, on, uh, uh, on procedural type lightings to create the type of effect you're looking for, because in most cases you just more or less settle for yeah you know that's good enough rather than actually attempting to push things forward to uh, to get the kind of results that you want. And one of the things that the, that the trickery that was used is uh, is to cascade your lighting levels from front to back. So in this case, I have a lighting level on here that's about. Uh, 150, maybe 200, which goes into a light that is probably set at about mm, 175, 150, into another light that's about 175, 150, probably about one more closer to 150, because we want to create a much more tunnel effect out to another light out here, which is probably set at about a light level of about 125 or so. <coughs> and we're pushing these in really close to the surface area to get that to get that to get the light to splash across the surface area this creates this this kind of this really nice uh, even light through uh, through a, an archway which has always been problematic which can only be really be resolved through the use of uh, the use of lap map lighting you know it's really rather difficult to take a, a, a volume like this an archway 
and create an even lighting tone. But with the use of the, using the specular map as well as the bump map without any type of uh, la map lighting or projected lighting off the surface area, the, um, the specular map is actually allowed to do what it's supposed to do, and that is to even out or to stretch the lighting across the surface. So instead of uh, messing around with uh, shader effects, what you should be messing around with is the output input levels of your specular map. You can make the, an area look really bright and light, or you can make it look dark and wrap, get your shade, your, your lighting to actually wrap properly around corners. So it doesn't look like you're, you're running into hot and cold type of uh, uh, areas. And in here, there's a, there's, a, there's a light in here, about 200 in the stairwell. That is to kind of force the light into this area in here to create a sense of direction. And then that, that allows us to move. And then, of course, when we come up here, we have another indication. This is a darker area than, I'll say, over there, which creates another sense of direction. We have a light lead up here, which is, uh, you know, so probably best. Uh, light leads is probably best left for, for a future discussion. They can be eliminated altogether, but does take a fair amount of work. <coughs> and then when we move up here, of course, we have a much more, we you know, have a much more volume of light in here. This has to be toned down a little bit, maybe pushed over into the corner. Uh, once again, pitch black doesn't matter. Uh, to the player models because uh, we're self-lit so you could have like a pitch black dark room and uh, you'll still be able to see your opponent in that room you know, you know the darker the room the, the, the easier it is for you to actually hit the target it's uh, as opposed to having uh, having uh, you know, the player kind of moving in and out and blending into the background Okay, so moving on, uh, let's, see, let's uh, start talking a little bit about how we create our base lighting effect uh, based on the theory of painting with lights. And that is, of course, you need to start with a clean canvas and you need to introduce the light elements as you would as, as a painted effect. So what we need to do, of course, is have a material, a flat type of material. In this case, I, I use a default of 50% gray with a with with a specular map of about 50% as well as uh, as a, a bump map that brings out the lettering textures as part of the default so everything is 50 50 50 it's everything is pretty well neutral across the board uh, you know we could use all white textures but then we get a false sense of lighting we could use all black textures but then it's we really have a difficult time of at start adding uh, adding uh, lights into it Based on the need to create a, an even an evenness in our, our shadowing effect. So, so what do we have here? Um, to set up the the initial lighting, the my initial lighting setup is basically uh, three. No, excuse me. It's uh, four. Um, it's four spotlights up in the sky here somewhere, pointed into four quadrants of of the map itself. Each area, I basically took a, uh, took a knife and went slit, slit, and cut the map into four separate slices. Uh, I have an A zone, a B zone, a C zone, a, a, B, C, and D zone, which each of these uh, spotlights are targeted to. Uh, once again, they're not volumetric, so there's no real strong relationship between distance to a, a surface area versus the radiated pattern as a, uh, as a radius, as a, as a level. And in this case, uh, the radius that I'm using for each of these zones is about uh, 3,000 units with a lighting level of about 3,000. <laughs> so you're pushing it out that much, uh, a radius out that much with a linear fall off of 0.1 as a level. It creates just basically a flat lighting level that the, uh, that the uh, my default texture that I built, which is 50-50-50, can work using it as uh, to create its own self lighting system based on one single light pointed into this direction here. So let's take a kind of a walk around here without the specularity being introduced into a 50, 50, into a 50 percent uh, texture layer that we're using as our default. This would be pitch black. We wouldn't be able to see a thing but obviously because of the way that the uh, lighting is layered into it as a base, we now have a means of being able to establish a much more controllable means of, of, of overall shading 
uh, around corners and so forth. I mean, the light levels as we move is equal in all areas of this, this map. So we have a very good cam first start of a canvas on which we can start painting our lighting uh, elements into it to uh, create a much more dramatic 3D uh, dimensional effect. <laughs> this is, and of course, I've added uh, a sc my own personal little dome of uh, gloom over top because it is raining which adds a lot. And once again, the fog does add a, a, a certain level of lighting, uh, allows the lights to kind of sort of semi-bounce off of it, creates an illusion of depth. But uh, the kind of uh, step, step things forward, see how things look. Uh, this, these, um, these awnings here have uh, a light map that has been, been assigned to it. And it does have well, an artistic appeal, but it really doesn't fit the overall lighting uh, levels that we want to establish in the scene here, and they become self-illuminated. <coughs> so this is how things become uncontrollable, because you start increasing light levels in one area, and then in another, and in another, and in another, to try, try to solve uh, overall uh, lighting problems within the map. With, uh, with the uh, painting with light techniques, uh, as I said, it's you work one area, you paint in your lights, you move to another, you paint in your lights, you move to another, you paint in your lights, and you continue that until the whole entire map is completed, and you have complete control over the light levels uh, as they're applied. Now, let's look at a rather drastic uh, type of uh, difference here. <coughs> this surface area here, except for the obvious that the uh, it's overstretched, uh, contains absolutely no bump map, contains no specular map, and it does not contain any type of... Uh, any type of, of um, let's, say, let's say, shader effect. So there's absolutely zero control over the surface area based on the lighting uh, pearl, uh, 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 the pearl technique that we're using here to introduce light into this, this, into this section here. So this is plain Jane, basic zero, what do you get out of the box type of texture. Same for the roof, absolutely no specular been added to it, which doesn't introduce lights into this, this, into this section in a diffuse manner. So very dramatic difference between what has a, spe spe a specular map applied to it and as well as a bump map versus the types of uh, lighting that we have in, in, in this area here. Now, if we, on the other hand, if we walk down here, we can actually see that we have a, somewhat of a natural type of effect taking place on a surface that actually has this more or less the same type of the same type of um, the type of uh, texturing as this wall over here has, yet we've applied a small amount, a 50% amount of, of spe specular, and using that to force a, a lighting effect into those areas here. In, in here. Now, <coughs> I figure that's probably about the end of that. Uh, I think uh, demonstrating uh, a neutral type of material uh, illustrates that specular itself, without the assistance of, uh, of any type of shader effect, can force a level of lighting into an area. And what really controls the lighting is not the, the, uh, the shader effect, but the input output of the different maps that are made use, that you can make use of as, as in lieu of, of any kind of shader. Anyways, I think that sort of fills that out. I was hoping to get this done in about a half an hour, but uh, this is pretty interesting stuff. Uh, once again, um, just to remind you, this is uh, more or less the re in the research phase of it. Uh, we just figured this is a good time as any to uh, start getting some information out there to the map makers in regards to some of the research that we've done and the results that we've have, have come across, and really leave it up to you guys to take it the the last uh, the last mile uh, to really see if 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 uh, if uh, this type of information is of use, and uh, hopefully we we'll see some really spectacular. Uh, maps uh, coming out in the future that we could uh, certainly turn around and say, you know, that that is an Urban Terror HD style map. Because the technology that we're using in here is to improve the overall performance as well as visibility. And we're not just putting it in as eye candy. So uh, hopefully with this little bit of information, we can see some really interesting stuff coming out from you guys.